Hello, hello, hello. Well, this is take three, I think, of this live video this evening. Who knew it would be such a challenge to get the tech right to get someone else on the Facebook Live with you? So, Laurelie's back in. I can see Laurelie just waiting for Dave to pop back in and I can re-invite him again. And hopefully this time I will be able to hear him. Hi, Laurelie. Thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. Appreciate your time and apologies for all of the waffle before. Um, and hopefully Dave's going to pop back in. And I think that might be Kate who's popped back in. Anyone else who's popped back in? We've got four people watching now. Hi, Kate. Thanks for coming back. All right. All right. Just waiting for Dave. So just to let you know. Oh, here we go. I think this might be it. Come on now, Facebook. All right. It says adding. Melissa's watching. Hey Mel, how's it going? Nice to see you. Looking forward to seeing you on. Can you hear me? Hey, I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh my god. Oh, that was so oh. It was my fault. It's because I have my uh, It's because I have my microphone plugged in, that's why. And thank you so much for Kate for letting us know that they could hear you even though I could. <laughs> uh, that that was just uh, I mean, why can these things never be easy? I know, I know, totally. It's 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 full on. Anyway, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us today, Dave. Finally, we got here 15 minutes late. Thank you so much to everyone who has the patience to hang around for us. Um, but they're just watching to see how much we can mess technology up. And now, have I got an echo? Uh, no, I don't think so. Well, I'm sure they'll all tell us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, let us know what you think of the, this fantastic technological broadcast <laughs> well this is my first time doing an interview my first time doing one of these split screen things from the controlling side of things so it was bound to go wrong anyway enough about that welcome dave thank you so much for joining us today my, my pleasure i think <laughs> um i think everyone's dying to know who on earth are you so would you like to give me a little bit of an introduction perhaps let us know who are you maybe a little bit of your background and um, yeah. Um, I work in IT. <laughs> okay, so I've been a fitness professional and sports scientist for nearly 25 years, predominantly in exercise rehab, getting people away from pain and reducing the risk of injury. About the start of lockdown, I started working with belly dancers, which is very random, but very fascinating from it's such an athletic movement and such an under research and you know just not enough being done to realize that actually there's a lot going on that can cause problems so to start with you know when i looked at what i've done with other sports to get across to belly dancing found huge amounts of knee problems loads of knee problems and you know we started doing workshops uh with charlotte Sorga and then you came to one of those workshops and we started you did some sessions with me and from there we've just kind of progressed and these workshops keep growing and growing and growing and if you want to get away from pain and you want a bit of a personalized program to improve your movement and obviously we talk a lot now we talk a lot about the biomechanics and you know your speciality and i just apply what goes on in the brain a little bit as well would you like to that's, talk a little bit more about the brain stuff? Because obviously the biomechanics is of everything connected to the brain, obviously. But And I know some of the people watching particularly have done um, some of the biomechanics with me before or people have already yeah. seen some of the stuff that I've done. What's um, And obviously that's connecting brain, like using the, the, the muscles, the contractions in the muscles to, to fire, fire things going on in yeah. the brain. What are you adding on to it with the, um, the studies that you've been doing in, in the neuroscience? So with the movement neurology, you um everything we do, best way to explain it, everything we do, make a cup of tea, uh, do a bar mechanics exercise, do a dance, the first thing that happens is a motor signal comes down the body. What happens once we move is a sensory signal goes back up the body and that constant loop tells us how to move. So every time we are doing anything, any practice, any 
any exercise, we are we are using the brain. But for some people, that is a very conscious decision. Okay, and what we want to do is get people towards subconscious movement. So I will speed up a lot of what we do, and you've seen me do this quite a lot now. And we'll just use some very simple eye drills, some kind of weird and wonderful techniques with your nose, your fingers, and just basically switching the brain on. All I'm trying to do is turn up the dimmer switch, so whether we're trying to correct pain, improve athleticism, improve coordination, we get it to happen quicker. That is the simplest way to put it. If we turn your brain on, you learn quicker, you move better, you perform better, you're less likely to injure yourself. Sometimes you have to do things very consciously, it's not natural, and it causes more and more problems. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it makes sense to me, but I've been working with it for a while. Hopefully it makes sense to everyone listening. Feel free to drop some comments in the box below if anything is not making any sense or if you've got any questions for them. Please ask questions. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, so yeah, and you were you were saying that you found that dancers had, tend to have a lot of knee pain. Any, how do you feel this might have been caused from the what you've been learning about belly dance as you've been going along? Well, I've been learning about that. I think going back to your background, uh, Rachel France's amazing biomechanics education courses. Most people don't realise they've got pelvic dysfunction of some course. And with dancers, the one thing I've said since day one is you are the greatest compensators in the world. You know, you can give the illusion of perfect movement whilst your body's using all kinds of different muscles, which what they weren't necessarily designed for. So that knee pain is generally coming from issues at the, at the hip or sometimes even the opposite shoulder. And that whole biomechanical piece that you do so well, and I'm trained, and I do as well. It really highlights all the different places. The symptom is just the knee pain. Now, yeah. what I add to that is sometimes looking at actually is there an element of head position, or is there an element of the brain just not taking the information in quick enough on time? Put them together, and they're so powerful. But a lot of it is knee pain. It's just the movement is so quick. Like when I was trying to learn this, because that's how I, the way I researched, I was like, how the hell do you lot do this? Because it just like, it's so athletic in such a small isolated movement most of the time. And that's where the problem comes from in knee pain or back pain, because you're doing something so quick, so powerfully, but it doesn't look to the out, you know, to the layman. It's like, well, it looks good. It looks quick. Till you try it, you don't realise how much exertion is going on. And if you're not firing the right muscles, because the brain's not sending the right signals down, or biomechanically you're off, you're going to cause some problems somewhere, unfortunately, because there's so much going on. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's one thing that really intrigued me when I first started working with you, when I think I saw the workshop that you did with Charlotte Advertise. And I think your tagline was belly dancers are elite athletes. And I was, yep. that's, you know, what drew me in. And it was so interesting. I think we often think of belly dance can be low impact, but we don't realize, you know, particularly with a shimmy, like how fast we are actually moving our legs, for example, and the hips and the pelvis along with that. And the stability that's required elsewhere to make it look so isolated as well. We don't realise all of that crazy stuff going on to make make it work and make it look good. Yeah, and I think what you just said there, those are lots of things that are going on at the same time that some of us would just try and go, wait a minute, I've got to move my shoulders that way, my hips that way, and I'm doing that on my knees, I'm doing that on my belly. Uh, can I just start with one, please? Because that's where I, I said it's like the dance athlete and it's not used enough when it comes to dance you know dancing is a very very athletic thing you know and how many a lot of people stretch in the dance world and not enough people do actually work on building you know checking pelvic function spinal mobility really understanding core stability i don't mean just a few sit-ups or you know actual core stability posture because if you give yourself a good frame to move around or a good solid axis you move better your extremities move easier if it's struggling that's where you get shoulder injuries and i've learned so much like it's quite fascinating like yeah you suddenly start to look at veil dancing and you start to realize well it looks like no weight whatsoever but it is and it's a weight and it's these complex movements that if you're not quite right with your posture maybe your day job 
is coming into it. So you've gone from the office and then suddenly you're dancing, you haven't really fired everything up properly and got everything working. These movements, which there is a massive weight, but it's enough of a weight and enough of a complexity for you to go, oh, frozen shoulder, my neck's hurting. All these things are about like complete biomechanical function, you know, being as good as it can do for that person. You know, no one's perfect, but getting them right for that person, improving their movement, and then also switching the brain on, you know, turning the dimmer switch up, you know, because once you go into that movement, if your ability to acquire a new skill or your motor learning, as we call it, your skill acquisition, you're a bit slow. That's, that's also a little bit of an injury risk sometimes. Yeah, totally. And this idea of turning up the dimmer switch, I think is fantastic because obviously I've been working myself with the biomechanic tech biomechanics techniques that I use uh, with my clients as well. But it was, I definitely found when I started working with you that just took it all to the next level. It was since I've been doing these, these weird little practices that we do with our eyes and our ears and stuff like that to really fire up the brain. I've noticed a massive difference, not only in my balance, but also in things like isolations, things like, like being able to pick up uh, choreography or combination when I'm taking class with someone else. So it's, it's, I can, you can really see the difference. And we're going to be talking about that a lot on Saturday for those of you who are booked on the workshop. Yeah, um, not already the workshop will go into you know, having a look at your basic biomechanics, mm -hmm. but then it will go straight into looking at how the brain is controlling those biomechanics and how it's making you do some very complex things and making sure it's coordinating that movement in the order you're designed to do it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think what we're going to try and do is put together way so that you can assess yourself during the yep. workshop make some notes and um find out which of the little drills which of the little practices that we do throughout the workshop are the ones that you can take away and do on a regular basis is that right yes to give you your own little daily practice and i mean little you know some people it's three minutes maximum is about eight minutes and you're just getting people to get their body ready for their you know their favorite activity that's what it's all about a little bit of a switch on of the brain, a little bit of a movement and maybe the odd joint or the odd movement that just needs to be tidied up, then get on with it. It's not about creating massive exercise routines. You know, whether I'm wanting to play rugby or belly dance or, you know, ride a horse, whatever it is, all you actually want to do is do that activity. Mm -hmm. You know, try not to combine those two together, by the way. Um, but... If you can fire the brain up and you can put your body in a better position before you start anything, you're going to enjoy it more. You're going to cut your risk of injury. You know, and if you have got pain, you're going to give yourself a chance of not being in as much pain and moving freely. Yeah, I've got that in there, moving freely. Moving freely, yeah, absolutely, Rachel. I love it. <laughs> and we've got a question from Kate. She says, do men and women have different pelvis issues because of their different shapes? She's asking, as most belly dancers are female. Yes, is the answer, but the assessment is specific to that person. So, you know, females have different pelvic shapes. So, as you will know, Charlotte, when we assess the pelvis, it's really interesting to people quite often have a light bulb moment and find something out, don't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, totally. Uh, it's interesting to, you can look at some pictures of pelvises and how deep the the hip socket is and you know that how the bony bit that sticks on top of the femur i'm not going to try and remember the anatomical name for it right now <laughs> but um, how that fits into the hip bone do you know what i mean yeah. or it's different for everybody and that's going to create different uh things for for everybody definitely yeah and i, I think part of it is we could go into the anatomical differences between men and women and go into great detail but the reality is you're assessing yourself and you'll find some people are tighter, some people are looser, but we're looking at symmetry as well. What we want is to get as close to symmetry as possible. You know, for that person, perfect symmetry, I doubt they exist anywhere. But through those little self-assessments, we're gonna take away the asymmetry that tends to cause problems, and then we're gonna take away the little issues maybe with the brain not necessarily firing as quick as it should be. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, um, that's all the questions I have for you, Dave. Is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, I'd like to ask anyone if they've got any IT skills. <laughs> yeah, I think I could do it. But I'd also like to say, like, we've done these workshops with 70, 80 dancers now. 
you know, a lot of people just get very simple results from coming to this workshop and just understanding a little bit more about their body. And quite often it will highlight, and there's many out there who will tell you, it will highlight things that they just didn't quite know, but then suddenly it will relate to why they've got a bit of back pain or a bit of knee pain, or even why they're struggling to learn a new skill or a new dance or a new practice or a bit of choreography. And that's what it's about. It's just a little piece of information for you to be much more aware of how you move. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to pop the link to book the workshop in the comments box. It's not there right now, but it will be within the next five minutes or so if you um, are interested in that. And if you are watching this on catch up, please do feel free to ask questions as well. You can tag me or you can tag Dave at David Sanders. Um, and then uh, I can always always let him know if you tag me. Otherwise, we will answer your question if you tag him. <laughs> that was a roundabout way. <laughs> all right, okay. I think it's time to finish now with all the technical but issues at the beginning. I think my thing. brain's given up. Of course, you can say one more thing. <laughs> you are way more composed than I was when I first started doing these things. Because by now, I'd have had meltdown. Because we tried one platform. Facebook wouldn't play, and it took us three times to get live. So you've done really well. By now, I'd have probably thrown my phone at the wall. <laughs> so take um, yeah. care. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Really appreciate you bearing with the technical difficulties. And if you've got any questions, let us know. And uh, take care. Good evening. Take All care. Bye-bye. Right,